Hey Chris, this is for the people, by the people. This was a special request. We have a lot of people wanting to know how to do edges along the edge of a stream. 99% of the time if we get a leak, it's never like a hole in the liner where I'm standing. I mean, I'm like up and down on this. It's always where this liner back around the side of the boulder, right? And the way it comes down, and here's why it happens. Look at the height of this rock right here. I put a level on it. If I look at the level here, it's gonna bring that water level to about here on the back side of the stone. Yep. As long as my liner was this high right here, it should be fine, right? Hey everyone, Chris from Team Aquascape along with Brian. There he is. And then we've got Kobe, Dan, and then Corey's around here. There's Corey. Yeah, he's under there somewhere. So we are drawing a landscape design for the customer. It's kind of cool because very rarely do we get to landscape the entire project. And definitely, I think between the two of us have a very good vision where we want to see this thing mature to over the next two to 10 years. And trees in the foreground, trees tucked in between little notches in the boulders and everything. So they're trusting us to put it together. So I just got to kind of give them a rough plan, very rough right? But we're going to present this to him a little later. What's nice about the plants, it'll definitely take it to its fullest potential. But I told you to grab the camera because <laughs> you're using my favorite rock in the entire place right now. And I think where you're going to put it is going to be amazing. Yeah. So as you can see behind me, we've set the kind of the bottom staircase leading down to this area. You've got the walkway spray painted out. We've got the sunken fire pit excavated. Now we're just kind of working our way back up. And this rock right here is going to kind of frame out that top section of staircase. It's it's going to be coming from that bridge element that's separating or that goes just in front of the upper pool up by the patio. So we, we set a bunch of these steps yesterday. You said a couple more today. Yep. So we've got six total steps here. Then you're going to pause for a little bit, mm -hmm. walk flat. Yep. And then this rock is going to frame out probably the next six steps that take us up, correct? I think so. And, that, and that's kind of the idea is the height of that rock to maybe we can get that staircase back behind Ra it and yeah, it'll frame out a so bunch good. of those steps. Similarly, for the way you see some of these rocks frame out the steps and kind of help them pivot. Bring them up there what and show think? them the actual size of it. So that thing's every bit of six feet wide, four feet tall. Yes. The idea is that staircase kind of starts right back where that black bucket. You've got two steps down to the bridge and then it kind of comes straight across. I think we had talked about this morning maybe twisting that walkway coming off of the bridge hard back behind me. So I'm hoping that if we set this piece somewhere back into this hillside, it'll establish my elevation as well as divert people back this way. And then we can kind of twist it around, creating a, I don't know, just that movement, that interactivity. We don't want people to take straight lines anywhere, right? We want them to meander through the garden space, which I think is one of the, 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 blah, blah. Yeah, right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. You know what he's talking about. <laughs> so I 100% agree with you. And the other thing I look at, Chris, like if we were to come from this step here, and even if we could figure out a straight path here, it would be more of like an escalator, right? It's gonna be a lot of steps really, really quick. By twisting the pathway around this way, we get a lot more real estate to get creative with the pathway. Also making it a much more enjoyable walk. Yeah. Nobody likes walking down like steep deck stairs. I want this to be kind of a relaxing journey as you move around the landscape, around the water feature, give it a second of time to pause, enjoy the landscape because we're gonna landscape all of this. We also want the pathway to make it accessible for them to get into the landscape yeah. a little bit. And speaking of the landscape, that's part of the reason why we do this is so that we can incorporate those plant pockets, these soil areas in between and on the backside of boulders and create the opportunity for understory trees, for shade trees, for ornamentals, heck, even perennials and shrubs. And yeah. Yeah, it's, too, you know? it's just gonna look amazing. So, well, let's go ahead and drop this guy in and. All right. Chris, this is for the people, by the people. This was a special request. We have a lot of people wanting to know how to do edges along the edge of a stream. 99% of the time if we get a leak, it's never like a hole in the liner where I'm standing. I mean, I'm like up and down on this. It's always where this liner back around the side of the boulder, right? And the way it comes down, and here's why it happens. Look at the height of this rock right here. I put a level on it. If I look at the level here, it's gonna bring that water level to about here on the backside of the stone. Yep. As long as my
my liner was this high right here, it should be fine, right? No, not usually. First, the water might back up a little bit more, but what happens is as water comes out from underneath this rock, even if I try to foam underneath this rock, water is gonna come in here. If this got dammed up at all right here, at this point here, and as water was leaking out through here and water leaked this way, and this was tight, this becomes a problem. The water can't escape this area at all. So we need to create what we call a weep hole. So what we're gonna do is of course, we're gonna foam underneath this rock. Like look at how much lower this area is here. Than where that level than was. Than where that level was up here. So if this got dammed up with a bunch of gravel and water weeped through here, which of course it will, because it just like, it's not water tight underneath there. And I didn't create some type of weep hole along the side here, mm -hmm. this would leak out. So the easiest way to fix this is actually dig some soil out right in here, create basically a French drain inside the liner. So we're gonna dig all of this out and do more of a big gravel edge in front of this. So that drip, drip, drip of water that comes through here has an easy channel to escape. And then this area, we intentionally didn't backfill the liner tight to this. Yep. We filled this whole thing up with gravel and we filled it up with a lot of bigger cobbly type stuff first and then just dusted the top. So as water then moves through through this area, it goes into a drainage pit, which then escapes out underneath this rock. So we're always thinking of ways that water moves, not just for the waterfalls, but it's those little areas you don't think about. Again, if I were to pack this all in tight, water would get up and over the top of this liner right here, and we'd get a leak. So we're creating escape exit plans for the, the water, basically. Hopefully that helps you guys. We're just about done with this project. Well, I say that, but now they want to do landscaping, so we might be out here for another day or so. But we're getting, like, we're getting there, as the pond world says. <laughs> couple things and I really want to explain it really try to show you but the main thing we did here was we put a rock right in here by foaming underneath this rock and sealing it so very minimal water ever comes through here from this spill stone right here this yeah. waterfalls so yeah really important that this was higher than that minimizing how much water came through here now it's just drip drip dripping through here yep. in fact the minimal amount of water we can actually put an aquatic plant in here and it'll look great then we sealed up underneath here and then the key thing we did is we put this pipe in here. So as long as we leave this as gravel here, yep. then put gravel over the top of this, even if the gravel were to get clogged, we still have this chase where water can get all the way down back into there. And then it's just important that from here back and through here stays gravel. Then we're done. Once the gravel goes back over the top of this pipe, we'll actually be able to bring soil over the top of it like this, hiding all this, keeping that water moving yep. underneath. So hopefully that helps you guys on just one more edge technique. We're going to try to show you guys more edge technique throughout the season, especially when we get into these weird folds and how to hide those. But we want to make sure you guys build non-leaky ponds. And we know a lot about that because... Doing it 30 years, yeah. you're going to you're gonna do that. a couple leaks here and there. Yes. <laughs> but you've learned from it. And that's the important you thing. try. Anyway. Because you guys asked for it, we're gonna film this. Jack over here, say hi Jack. Hi Jack. <laughs> is working on kind of a unique edge situation. So many of you guys are wanting to know how to do edges and different edge treatments. And because I've got Chris over here doing the spillway and Jack doing an edge at the same time, let's film it. Show you guys kind of what's going on. So Jack, what was your question that you had to Chris when first wanting to do this? Show him kind of where the liner came to. The liner actually came all the way up to the patio originally, right? Yeah. And so here's a unique area where the patio is actually quite a bit higher higher than the back edges of our stone over in here. But our water level is a good 10, 12 inches lower than the lowest part of the back edges of our stone. So there's a couple ways we could do this. I think a quick and easy way, pull that liner back, would be just get that flat and cover this with just a bunch of gravel. As long as these folds here, show them how the folds would stay up. Yeah, kind of like that. Show them, this is the overlapped liner. So we would want to keep all of that up like that. So if water trickled back behind here, it would just fall into this weep hole back over in here. And so when easy easy way would have been just cover all this with gravel and call it a day but because we're so into the landscape and softening all of our edges later show them how you started rolling that 
So if we roll that liner like this, and he's got a lot of extra here, so we can actually trim a lot of this off, because we don't want to keep all this liner. As long as he rolls it and we keep at least four inches extra, so if this ever settles or gets low, we can bring it back up, we're good. So we're gonna fold it like this, then come in and bring soil right up to this. By bringing soil all the way up to here, between here and the patio, now we allow for some ground covers and some other plants and stuff to come in here and really soften this edge. So we'll let Jack kind of prep this, get ready, and we'll show you what that finished result looks like. 